Hello, this is Al Moran here again, and I'm going to do a quick video on the very basics of Kerbal Space Program for newer players. This is your first 15 minutes in Kerbal Space Program. And we'll start off with the uh, Kerbal Space Center itself. And the most important building when you're starting to play is the Vehicle Assembly Building. You can actually see the name in the status bar on the bottom left. If you like, you can have a look at some of these other buildings, but right now, this is where we're going to begin. So first and foremost, here's how you build a rocket. I'm actually going to start from scratch to give you an idea. You're going to need a command pod of some kind. There are some robotic pods, but uh, we'll start with a regular command pod. This allows you to control the ship. Without this, the ship won't do anything. Uh, next, you're going to need some kind of engine and, and fuel to power that engine. Now, notice how I get the, uh, the parts. Left click on a part and just move it over to where you want and the little green balls will attach to the other green balls it'll sort of snap into place like that and then you just left click again to leave that where it is I'm gonna grab another fuel tank again it snaps into place now you can actually rather than going here you can copy a part from what you've already taken by holding down the alt button clicking takes a copy and off we go you can actually copy a whole section if you like it'll take the part and all the parts that are children of it now you notice I'm moving the camera around here. Hold down the right mouse button and drag the mouse around to scroll the camera angle. To move the camera up and down, I'm using the mouse wheel. And to zoom in and out, shift and the mouse wheel. Now you can also move parts around. So I'm going, you can take a part and I can rotate it by 90 degrees along various axes. I'm rotating it here, you can't really tell that I'm doing it. And uh, you can also, if you hold down the shift key and press rotate, you can rotate it in five degree increments. Now, that's not going to be very useful here because I can't rotate it against there. But if I were to surface attach, this is called surface attaching a part. And now if I really wanted to, I could start rotating it and attach it like that. Symmetry comes into play now. I'm in one time symmetry, and that's fairly obvious. Symmetry is always in the VAB around its rotational symmetry around the vertical axis through the center of the rocket. So let me switch that to two times symmetry and attach the part. And you can see it's put one here, and then if you rotate around, it's put another one here. I go to three times symmetry, like that, and four times symmetry and you can actually go six and eight times symmetry but the parts have gone red because they'll be clipping through each other and it won't let me place it there if you press the space bar while you're holding a part like this it will actually reset it back to its default orientation so that's called uh, surface attachment or radial attachment in it is another way I don't think there's a name for this kind of attachment it's just the default now I'm also going to need a rocket engine. Oh, to delete a part, I don't actually want these parts. So to remove a part from your craft, you just pick it up with the left mouse button and drop it anywhere in the parts list. So let me attach a rocket engine to the bottom. Now the rocket needs fuel and the rocket will drain fuel from the furthest tank away down through and into the rocket. Uh, if you attach parts radially like this, the fuel won't flow across radial uh, attachment unless you use a fuel line but I'm not going to talk about that in this video next is the staging list here are my stages in my rocket right now I only have one stage and the stages get executed from the bottom up I can add stages by clicking the plus or remove them by clicking the minus <clears throat> I'm going to move the liquid engine down into its own stage and just to show you how it works I'm going to add a decoupler which is another thing that obviously you might want to be able to stage and I don't want obviously to decouple the uh, rocket from the command pod at the same time as the engine fires I want to do that at the end so I'm going to move the decoupler up to here so the first time I press the stage it'll fire the rocket when it runs dry I'll press the staging key again which will decouple and I'm going to need some way of keeping the uh, my Kerbal safe so I'm going to attach a parachute to the top and the parachute will be in the final stage. Uh, nothing else really to talk about in the VAB, so let's launch this. Okay, the, uh, the main interface when playing the game is this one. There's a few things to talk about here. First of all, this is your primary uh, GUI element. This is called the nav ball. On the left-hand side is the throttle. I'm moving the throttle up and down here. 
on the right hand side is the G meter, don't worry too much about that. And your velocity, which is obviously right now zero. Surface means my velocity relative to the surface. If I left click, it switches to my orbital velocity. Now Kerbin actually rotates, as you can tell, at a velocity around its own axis. That's why I have orbital velocity right now. Uh, you can hide this if you want, but uh, you probably won't be doing that very much. Up the top is your radar, sorry, your altitude above sea level. This is not radar altitude, which is why I have some altitude already. Atmospheric pressure, high, and obviously in space, zero. And your vertical velocity, when this needle is up, you're going up fast, and when it's down, you're going down fast. Um, the timer begins when you launch. And if you click here, you can see all of your resources, oxidizer, liquid fuel, electric charge. Also be aware that you can right click on things and often there'll be things you can do. These little buttons, I could activate the engine from here, which would be uh, just like staging it. I can lock the gimbal, which means it can no longer thrust vector. Don't worry too much about what that means, but just be aware that you can right click on parts and perform certain actions. And when it comes to career mode, this is going to be important because there is, this is the way that you uh, earn science. So let's press the staging key, which by default is space. For me, it's actually a joystick button. And throttle up. And off we go. Now, my rocket, or your rockets, you may find start doing this. And they don't go quite where you want, and it can be a little hard to control. There is a function called SAS. If you look on the nav ball, I'm going to press the SAS key. And I can't tell you what the default is because I'm using a joystick, but I'll get to that towards the end of the video. And now SAS is going to keep the rocket pointed the way it's currently pointed. I can still provide control input, but when I stop providing input, it's going to try and hold me on that heading. On the other side is the RCS indicator saying RCS is now turned on. I don't have any reaction control system thrusters on this vessel, but I can still steer it because the command pod provides some torque. Uh, by the way, you might notice here and in the VAB, when you hover over a part, the icon gets highlighted in the uh, staging list. And the opposite is also true. When you hover over a part in the staging list, the part will be highlighted in the game, and that works in the vehicle assembly building as well. So SAS, by the way, is going to start draining power. Uh, moving, trying to fly the craft also drains power. But if SAS needs to keep you stable, it's going to be draining power as it is right now. Map view, M. Map view lets you see your trajectory. Here's me, here's where I'm going. App, my apoapsis is the highest point of my trajectory. This is well below orbit right now. You can bring up the nav ball again. If you want to be able to steer the ship in map view, you have to bring up the nav ball. That should really be on by default. I'm not sure why it's not. You can also zoom in and out in map view with the scroll wheel and you can rotate the view again by holding down the right mouse button and uh, dragging the, uh, the cursor around. And if you like, you can zoom all the way out. So here is our Kerbin, my planet, and it's two moons. And then there's my orbit and another planet's orbit. And if you hover the mouse over, you can see some information about all these things. Um, you can also uh, see information about your ship, if you like. I'm going to come out of map view now and watch myself falling back to the ocean here. I'm going to want to stage again because I'm done with my, my fuel tanks are now empty and useless. So I'll press the staging button and see you later back on my rocket. And my command pod will orientate itself in the way that minimizes drag, which usually happens to be the right way around. And notice how easily I can control which way I'm facing now. It's because there's no mass on the rocket and uh, the command pod has a lot of torque just to control itself. For bigger rockets, you're going to need things like RCS or additional torque provided by reaction wheels. I'll talk about that in your next 15 hours in KSP video. Now, as I'm falling, you'll notice my speed is decreasing. Kerbin has a very dense atmosphere. It'll actually slow you down all the way to about 110 meters per second before you hit the ocean. Uh, I won't actually survive 100 meters per second, that's why I've got the uh, the parachute on board. But I'm going to wait until my speed decreases quite a lot, otherwise it might uh, rip my parachute off. And uh, also it takes a long time to watch. In fact, if I press that now, we'll see the advantage of the, uh, the physics warp. So if I'm um, <coughs> waiting for myself to land, it's going to take a long time once the parachute deploys. It'll deploy at 500 meters. And if I'm not that patient, if I hold down Alt, and press the period key, 
you'll see I get a different colored arrow and everything's happening faster. You can actually go up to four times physics warp and you can still control the craft while you're doing four times physics warp. If I press Alt and press the comma key, it goes back down to one times. So let's go up to four times physics warp and uh, watch ourselves fall away here. By the way, down here, this is showing your control inputs and if SAS is providing any input, that will also be displayed here. Um, I could actually get out if I wanted to and do an EVA. Um, there's a lot of things you can actually do with the, the parts on your ship. Okay, so I'm in the ocean. I'll show you the other kind of warp. This is called rails warp. You notice I can go up to much faster than four times. In fact, you can go up to much, much faster than four times. And this is useful when you are needing to get an interplanetary intercept or something like that. And you can see the planets are now moving around very quickly. But while you're in rails warp, you cannot control the ship. You can't fire your engines, you can't turn or anything of that nature. So you put that back down. And what do I do now? My guy's stuck out in the middle of the ocean. Well, press escape and go to the space center. The space center is a way of recovering a vessel that you've launched. If you hit the revert flight, which you may have seen, that's like returning to your previous point in time. I'm going to actually recover, so I'll come to the tracking station and I will select my ship and click recover. And I've saved my Kerbal and now he's back in the, uh, the astronaut complex. I think that's all I really want to talk about in, uh, in this video. Oh, by the way, you can zoom in and out. This is really just map view again, so you can do most of the things that you could uh, in the flight map view, if you like. There is one other thing that I want to mention, and that is you should come out at some point. Uh, with every new game, this is usually the first thing I do, in fact. Go to the settings and look at the input list. This is all the functions that you can perform in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, you'll notice things like, uh, where's some good stuff to show? Your uh, quick save and quick view screens. Uh, in the staging list you might see your picture and roll controls which you can remap. I use a joystick as I mentioned so I've got a lot of other controls there. Your lights key, the RCS and SAS keys, precision controls, landing gear brakes. You should come in at some point and have a look at what these are and perhaps remap them. Now it may look overwhelming it looks like there's a lot of controls, but you can see that several of them are redundant. Pitch down, up, your left and right appear in staging and docking, and uh, probably in character or rover, or I actually use the axes, and they're the same controls, and you can bind them to the same keys. Uh, and uh, probably come in and tweak your graphic settings as well when you start for based on uh, the power of your machine. And in general, by the way, there's a, if you're having lag problems, there is a, um, a way of fixing that by setting this all the way down to this side. And you can change the uh, size of the user interface. That's the nav ball and everything like that in flight. Uh, that's all I really want to talk about. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.